today on Community Cooking. We have guest chef Jill Reed in the kitchen with us. We're making a jerk spice grilled mahi-mahi served with melon avocado salsa over a bed of tropical rice. We're cooking with some of the best chefs from right here in our own community. So grab a seat and relax because we have another fantastic show coming up for you. This is your Community Cooking. Welcome to Community Cooking. I'm your host, Maria Prekacis, and I'm super excited to have guest chef and my dear friend, Jill Reed, in the house, as I like to say. Thank you for having me. Well, and you have fish, mahi-mahi. I love fish. Yes. And we're doing a little jerk spiced. A little uh, tropical Caribbean vacation sort of menu for I us love today. It. Well, she's just bring in a palm tree from outside. <laughs> we'll be good to go. So the jerk spiced chicken, we'll get to the... Um, melon avocado salsa but what makes it jerk spice and tell me about the ingredients the, well we have your salt and pepper which you know kind of go in everything standard uh, jerk usually is allspice and then a really hot spicy pepper but because i cook a lot with my son who's six we tone it down a little bit and we're not using scotch bonnets we're using a little cayenne we have uh, cumin which i, I can love cumin. smell already oh. right here oregano cinnamon and then allspice, which is one of the traditional ingredients in jerk spice. And a lot of times you hear about jerk chicken, but I'm going with fish because it I just lightens it up a little bit for me. I love fish. Mahi Mahi, the fish so nice. They named it twice. Love it. <laughs> so for the rub, what do we do? We have our You put all the ingredients in one bowl. Our oregano, oregano for us Greeks, thank you. Cumin. There's the cinnamon. The cayenne, I use about a quarter of a teaspoon, but you know, if you like it spicy, go ahead and I like it, I like it spicy, but it's okay. Add in a little more. You can't, you can't take it out. You can always add it in. I just put on a little black pepper and then a little bit of the sea salt. Why do you like sea salt? Um, it just, it's a good universal salt to me. Okay. I don't, the, I like the texture of it. In certain things, and then if you're cooking it down, it, it you know dissolves. But okay. if you have to uh, use it as a finishing salt, and you get that little crunch from it, I kind of like that too. Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, and All then, right. oh you know what? I'm going to use this. So it's a rub, but we use a little bit of oil. A little in the oil. Rub. It's a little so. bit of a wet rub. So okay. that's avocado oil, which is just nice and light. It's just kind of to bind it together uh, to make almost a paste. And the avocado oil isn't as heavy as, say, your olive oils and things yeah, like that. Yeah, it doesn't add a big punch. It's also good at high heat. Grapeseed oil oh. works good, too. They cook nicely at high heat. I did not know that. And so. this way, too, the rub sticks to the fish a little more. A little bit more, yeah. Okay, silly question. Fish. I know chicken you have to rinse. Do you rinse fish at all? Um, I do, depending on what kind it is. Okay. Um, I did rinse this. Just... You know, make sure it's trimmed nicely and cleaned up a little bit. So, I love put it that there. And then this is the part where you get to get a little, get a little dirty, a little messy, a little dirty and messy. And, Why uh, wouldn't we? You just kind of want to coat this a little that bit. Smells good on both sides. You want to get that good. See, and it stays on with that little flavor. bit of oil. So okay. super simple and super easy. Oh yeah, and this is all really easy approachable stuff that you can just find at your regular grocery store it's you know it's a tropical menu but it's not so exotic that you're running all over town <laughs> trying to find that, like, crazy ingredients give me one store to go to and that's good now could you do this with other fish i know you like the um, mahi mahi i have actually the first time i had it i had it at a restaurant in saint thomas in the u.s virgin islands oh and they made it with tilapia Okay. Um, but I like Mahi Mahi. It's a little meatier. It holds up a little bit better on the grill for me. And when I'm at home, I usually do make this actually on the grill. Um, today I have a grill pan. You can do it inside on the grill pan or you can do it outside That's on, on your grill. barbecue and it works just fine. And the pan, you uh, put a little olive oil or put a little oil. What kind of oil? That was the avocado oil. Okay, again. because it's a good for a high heat, so you're not going to burn and hopefully won't stick to the pan. <laughs> Fingers, Fingers crossed. crossed. <laughs> and, and then um, we're going to go ahead and start it. Normally I, you can let it sit for 10 to 15 minutes, okay. um, which is what I 
typically do, but we can go ahead and get it started. I'm going to go ahead and throw, I think, two pieces in here. Part sure. Two, four. You know me. I like to eat. How do you know when your pan is hot enough? Well, this one is already sizzling. I, you can put a little bit of the oh, a little bit of the spice on the spice in there and, and see it. And then yeah. you get, oh, that sounds nice. It does sound nice. We'll go ahead and put. I was like, let's throw a third one in. As my stomach's growling. We'll go ahead and put those in there, and then we'll. Why not? Save our tongs. Here. And with fish, you don't want to overcook it. So about right. how long per side? Um, this one is like three or four minutes okay. per side. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit because that pan is. Smoking. Smoking hot. All right. And, and then, then the next thing ingredients is. Ingredients for the avocado, avocado melon salsa. Yes. So we have our cantaloupe. You can use mango. You can use honeydew. I like the contrast of the color. Okay. And I like the texture of cantaloupe. It gives it a little crunch. But it gives a good uh, sweet flavor to cut through the oh, okay. spiciness of the fish. That makes sense. So we mix. So the cantaloupe. other ingredients are uh, cilantro. cilantro, shallot. You can use red onion, but I like the milder flavor of shallot. I'm with you there 100%. Yeah. Some lime juice and a little more avocado a oil. A little avocado okay. oil, and that's it. So I always buy an extra avocado because you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> it's a mystery. That's the best tip of the day. <laughs> it is. OK, and here we go. Beautiful. Oh, very nice. Well, and I've read online all the tips with put it in a paper bag, put it in your microwave, put it in the oven. It doesn't work. You just have to get it. You fit. get what you get, and you don't have a fit. And the Torrance like, Farmer's Market has great fresh oh, produce. They do. You'll always find one there. And then the cilantro, how much, and I'll start chopping. The cilantro, maybe about half that, and you just okay. want to, you know, you can rough chop it. You want to kind of have the texture of it. Okay, with the through. stems, because I sometimes sit here and pick them off. And I use the stems. Cilantro good. is one of those herbs that I really like because you can use the stems. I love cilantro. I will tell you though, one of the one of the little <laughs> chores I give my son when we're in the kitchen and I need to keep him occupied while I'm doing something is I I have him pick the leaves off the stems. It so keeps you're him, saying I'm like your six year old son. It keeps be. him busy <laughs> and I can go, you know, finish some of the other things that I need to be doing. <laughs> I just need a to little, come hang out at your house. I'll just, pick them off with your son. It's a little mom pro tip. <laughs> that is very good. Well, we always love to really encourage cooking with family, cooking with friends. So that's yeah. a great. Have your kids do the tedious job <laughs> to keep them busy. It does. I can keep them busy for a good ten minutes. Oh yeah. And the avocado. The avocado. We're just gonna kind of dice that up roughly. It doesn't have to be uh, too small. You want it to hold its shape. Because mm, this is going to go over the fish. It's going to go over the fish yeah, and over the rice. And then the lime juice can go in. Okay. Oh, you know what? There are certain times guacamole <laughs> and salsa, lime juice is more appropriate, in my opinion, than lemon. Just my humble opinion. And we can go ahead and put our cilantro, our melon here, the can cantaloupe. Can use all the melon? Yeah, go ahead and use all of that. And then I'll accept that last bite that Maria needs. <laughs> oh look, one. <clears throat> I do a little mm. just a little pepper. You don't need too much because okay. the fish is already gonna have spice and the salt obviously will help bring out some of the sweetness of the And cantaloupe. shallots, I and like shallots. you said, they're not all of them. Yeah. Uh yeah. Kinda eyeball it. I usually do two shallots, those might have been kind of big. Okay. And then the avocado oil will kind of give it a nice uh sauciness or we like shininess. It, saucy it makes it here. pretty. It makes it a little And just fold them all together. Shiny. I know I just, we're not yeah. baking, but can I still use the term fold you all your ingredients? You can fold it. You want to gently combine it because you don't want to break up your avocado. Okay. That was one good avocado. Good doing heavens. that, I'm going to check on the fish. And with the See. fish, you always you always tell me it's flip it once, which okay. I'm really bad about. Well, this is a flip it once because it's fairly small pieces yeah. and then yeah you definitely want to it smells so good off. already I'm trying to be gentle with the salsa so I can get under there hence the oil oh so you can see it the herbs and stuff kind of crust up and get a little crispy sign me up oh my gosh that smells so good so how did you get into cooking you're very very talented but you I love it because you I love you because you can cook how did you get into it? What's your history? Well, 
That's the, <laughs> the cayenne, spice. The cayenne pepper coming the out. The cayenne. My, my mom is a fabulous cook, and she has always been in food service. She was a caterer. She was a cook at a hospital. She's been, you know, just my entire life. And my grandmother was from Oklahoma, so everything was fried. Fried in a lot or of Or covered in gravy. Oh, my lo I love it. But it was delicious. Um, so I just tried to learn from both of them, but then also put my own spin on things. And obviously, living in Southern California, we have the best ingredients and great fish and great produce. You can lighten things up a little bit. Although I do, I will cop to good fried chicken once in a while. Oh, well, I'm sure with family from Oklahoma, yeah. they know how to make it. Yeah, but you can't eat like that every day. No, but so, you have to treat yourself. Yeah. So we have our fish, which I just flipped. It's got a couple more minutes on it, and then um, the salsa. Our can, salsa. Is I'm with taking you. You a spoon to and... taste it before I get the whole thing. It's really fresh, right? Oh it's my gonna, word! Love it. I put it on grilled chicken. I put it on grilled pork tenderloin. You can use the same spice rub on pork tenderloin. I would just no. eat this like this. Eat it just with the rice. I mean, seriously, you could. It's a, it's a good little easy dish. If you wanted to chop it up a little finer, you could even make it, you know, for eating with chips. It's a little chunky for that right now. But oh, but then you get more on your chip. Yeah. You <laughs> then you get more on your chip. But we'll put more of this on our mahi-mahi in a little bit. We're going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back in 60 seconds. I see my friends out there getting waves and talking about them, and I know exactly what they're doing and what they're feeling and everything. It's like, it's hard. I was diagnosed when I was uh, 57. It was a surprise to me when they told me I had MS. It's like, you sure? Well, the idea is this is a uh, 360 degree virtual reality camera rig. Steve hasn't been able to ride a wave in way too many years, so now I'm gonna ride a wave and we get to share it with him. Well, we're gonna do something. Just put that on your head. Whoa. This is unreal. Coming up, coming up, coming up. Boom. Nice. Nice. This is fantastic. Yeah, let me set it up and you get into set the ride. Up. Let's do that again. Welcome back to Community Cooking. If you're just joining us, I am with guest chef and good friend Jill Reed. And we've done some mahi-mahi jerk style. Yes and some avocado melon salsa. But to go with it... I need to have a little carb, a little starch on the plate. <laughs> a little starch and, just, and my rum cocktail, <laughs> we'll get that later. Uh, we're doing a tropical rice. So we have, I've cooked the jasmine rice ahead of time in my rice cooker. You can do it on the stove, but it's cooked with some coconut milk and chicken broth. Oh, really? So and instead of water, do you just use those two yes. wet ingredients? Yes. So you've got your rice in there in the rice cooker and jasmine rice. I use I like jasmine rice because it's I like a longer grain rice and I also keep a giant bag of it in my house and I can use it for everything. So it's easy. It goes in soups. It goes in you know salads. It goes all all over the place. So chicken broth and coconut milk. Yes. What are our other ingredients? There's some pineapple. This is going to help make it tropical. It's some crushed pineapple, almonds for a nice little crunch, green onions brown sugar, this is a little sesame oil, Okay. and then soy sauce. And just kind of mix it all we in. Mix it all together. So I love it. So easy. Not a ton of ingredients. We like that. Thank you for making it easy for rice. me. And I like that you get a little bit of a brown, I like that, crust I from the, the coconut milk has the sugars and stuff in it, so it kind of adds a little more okay. flavor to it. And I think everyone, I'm not pushing rice cookers, but everyone should get one. I, I you know what I easy. it takes the thinking out of it. I never used to use my rice cooker, and I've started using it more recently, and it's super convenient. I was lazy. I bought frozen rice, but then I was thinking, you know, why am I buying frozen rice? Oh yeah, spending all this money on frozen rice. All right, so the soy, soy and then our sesame oil, and all super healthy. Right, well, we're a little too healthy yeah, today. Brown sugar. <laughs> I'm gonna use a little bit of the green onions to mix in, and then maybe a little bit more. To garnish it if we like. Okay. Same with the almonds. And those slivered almonds? They're slivered almonds and then I just toasted them a little bit. Actually I toasted them in my microwave. Just spread them out on a single plate. Okay, a single seriously? layer. I just like toast them for 30 minutes or 30 minutes, 30 seconds and check them. 
flip around a little bit until you get them as toasty as you like. Because toasting sesame seeds, any sort of right. nut, I'm always burning them in the oven. Yeah, or on the, the stove top, but yeah. in the microwave, if you just set it for 30 seconds, you can't really do too much damage. It's Maria proof. Don't <laughs> just say that because that and is one thing. Then our crushed pineapple. Crushed, so it's not big chunky right. chunk. Big chunky big, chunk. Big I can make a rap chunk. song out of that. Put a little more of that in there because that's going to give it pineapple. the yummy flavor. Oh, it flavor. smells so good. I know that pineapple is really good. I think it, that with the nuts. It's, I can't um, wait to taste. The nuts give it that crunch, that you know, a nice texture to it, and then. The soy sauce and the sesame oil. I can smell the sesame oil. It's so fragrant. I was going to say, I, uh, what is that smell? It is the yeah, sesame it's oil. Yeah, sesame oil. I cook with that a lot, and it just kind of helps give the rice, uh, again, that glossiness and the kind of sumptuous The feel. shimmer, shim, shine. The shimmer, the shimmy, shimmy, shine. <laughs> That's for another show. <laughs> yeah, this uh, is a family show. This is a family, but the shimmer, shimmer, shine. But because I wouldn't think to put a little bit of oil in rice, but it does, right. and you can smell right. it and just all the flavors yeah. together, I'm well, sure. Well, the coconut oil kind of makes it a little bit sticky when you're cooking it, so the sesame oil helps to take away a little bit of that stickiness. So it's oh, it smells so not good. Not a big lump of rice on your plate. Well, and you said you got this idea from a vacation. Yes. Where do you get and who, you know, inspired? Who do you get inspired by? Where do you get inspired a besides your mom and your grandma? A lot of restaurants, you know. We don't go out to eat a lot, but when we do, we like to eat good, fresh food and experiment in ethnic places. So I, I just borrow and you kind borrow. of it's okay. make them my own. I, you know, you tweak things a little bit. The first time I had the salsa was with mango, and I wanted something a little crunchier than mango, so I put in the cantaloupe. And, and cantaloupe is good. much easier to cut. It is much easier to cut. <laughs> That's and my opinion. You, you, mango is almost like an avocado where you don't know what you're going to get until you cut into it. Cantaloupe is usually pretty forgiving. So, yeah. yeah, you can smell it. You can, and like we said earlier, the farmers market always has such right. great produce. You really can't go wrong. And whatever you have left, you can have for breakfast the next day. Oh, I love it. And tweaking recipes, I think more people are afraid to do that. I had a roommate once who she would open up the refrigerator and go, "Okay, I go, there's nothing in it," and all of a sudden there'd be a meal on the right. table. Oh, yeah. To try things or tweak <laughs> things or <laughs> substitute. Recipes, recipes are a guideline for me, unless I'm baking where, you know, there's a little more science to it. But stuff like this is really forgiving. If you don't like green onions, you could put red onions. You could put the cilantro in the rice. You, oh, that's a good if idea. If you don't like pineapple, you could put mango in there or just skip it all together if you don't, you don't want that fruity flavor in your rice. Um, nuts, I like almonds. They're pretty... You could maybe do peanuts. You could do peanuts. You could do cashews. Okay. Yeah, oh, cashews, cashews would be good. good. Even um, macadamia nuts oh, would be good. Now with the we're pineapple. talking tropical. So. <laughs> I like my macadamia nuts and chocolate as yeah, well. Yeah, those are good too. All right, well, we're going to take a quick break. and we come back, we're going to plate everything up. And my favorite part, the tasting. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in 60 seconds. This is the city where danger lurks. Today, a new creature walks among us, terrorizing innocent citizens. They prowl the streets alone and in packs, causing mayhem, destruction, and carnage. Warning, until this threat can be contained, we must all be on the lookout for the dreaded digital deadwalkers. They're not looking out for you. Dude! Engage! A public service safety message from the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons who want to keep everyone well connected. Sorry. With strong, healthy bones. Welcome back to Community Cooking. I'm with guest chef and friend Jill Reed, who has made a grilled spice jerk mahi mahi. Did I get all that right? <laughs> With tropical rice and a melon avocado salsa. Yes. Whew. It was much easier to make than say. <laughs> Tastes like vacation. It does. All right. Forks <laughs> in hand. I'm all sharing. Right. I told her maybe. It depends how much I like it, but it smells so good. I need a little bit of everything. I know the the salsa cuts through the. Mm. 
<laughs> All right, anyway, <laughs> I'll still share. The, the spices, the rub, you can taste a little bit of the cinnamon. Um, and then with the rice, it's weird that sesame oil, the flavors come out and, okay, really the salsa, I would just eat it by the bowlful. And it's good because you've got the saltiness of the fish and then the sweetness with the rice. And oh! Everything balances really nicely together, I think. Again, I'm just going to... And gonna, she's taking it and going I'm away. I'm just going to hoard it. It's okay. I'll make more at home. Oh, <laughs> this is so good. Thank you so much for coming It's a lot today. of fun. Thank you. You have to try these recipes at home. You will not regret it. For Jill, myself, and the entire crew, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll see you next time on Community Cooking. If you'd like a copy of the recipe seen on this show, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope to the Office of Cable and Community Relations. That's 3350 Civic Center Drive, Suite 200 in Torrance, California, 90503. Be sure to note the show number displayed on the screen. And don't forget you can find all the fresh ingredients used on today's show at the Farmer's Market. Visit the one here in Torrance at Wilson Park. That's located at 2200 Crenshaw Boulevard. They're open every Tuesday and Saturday from 8 a.m. until 1 p.m. rain or shine. And if you'd like to be a guest on our show, email us at communitycooking at torrentca.gov and check us out online at youtube.com slash torrentcitycable and like us on Facebook at Community Cooking TV.